Thank you, Madam Speaker. I call the Honourable Chris Farfoy. Speaker, can I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak to the second reading of the Consumer's Right to Know uh, Country of Origin Food Bill. Um, before I um, uh, respond to some of the um, comments um, from the Chair of the Primary Production Committee, can I um, ask for some uh, similar leniency that other members have had uh, to note the significance uh, of today, the 125th uh, anniversary of uh, suffrage here in New Zealand. Um, other members have um, uh, highlighted particular people of importance to them, and I would like to highlight um, the importance of my predecessor, um, Dame the Honourable uh, Lua Manuel Winnie Laban, who I think is someone um, who, uh, from people all around this House, will um, understand uh, pave the way in terms of Pacific women uh, being represented in this House, uh, especially uh, in ministerial roles. So, um, on the special day for women, I would like to pay tribute to her, uh, a very important person um, uh, in my political career too. Um, can I thank? Um, uh, the Honourable David uh, Bennett for his contribution, um, quite uh, enlightening uh, contribution uh, around the select committee um, uh, process uh, for this piece of legislation. Um, and also thank him for his message uh, around the duty of care uh, with the discretion that um, section 27 of the Fair Trading Act allows uh, the Minister of Commerce and Consumer Affairs now. Um, to a degree, there is uh, a carte blanche uh, ability uh, for the Minister uh, who holds this responsibility to um, add foods uh, to the regime. Uh, I also want to thank uh, the Select Committee for putting in clauses within this piece of legislation uh, to specifically exclude uh, foods as well, and I think that is one of the things that um, the Select Committee ha has done, uh, which I think will be a bit of a safeguard. As um, the member will know, he's held a, a ministerial delegation uh, with a fair bit of discretion in the past, um, and I think um, a, a little bit of public scrutiny uh, is also going to be uh, one of the checks and balances to make sure that um, anyone who uh, holds this responsibility um, doesn't uh, go too far. Uh, what, what I would say, and I want to um, pay tribute to um, the Green Party, uh, Gareth Rees and Stephen Browning, is that I think this is probably just the first step in the journey in terms of consumers uh, getting more information about the provenance of their food. Um, as uh, a number of uh, members have already mentioned, and I'm sure we'll mention through the continuation uh, of this debate and this reading, um, it's becoming increasingly important for consumers uh, not only to know uh, the country in which um, their food uh, has been produced, um, but it is becoming a selling point for many of our primary industries now, uh, a particular area in New Zealand where um, uh, their food uh, may be um, uh, produced. I think that not only for information for New Zealand consumers, um, but that is useful for us in telling uh, New Zealand's story in terms of um, where our food has come from, uh, exactly how um, that food has become uh, produced uh, and can add value. So I think uh, in terms of this uh, particular type of information, uh, it is also very important. Uh, just uh, also uh, one uh, other note that um, the chair of the select committee raised uh, around costs. Um, I guess I share, I'm not sure if it was frustration, but probably um, some scepticism about some of the figures that were probably put in front of the select committee so those members on that um, committee could get a fair idea of where the costs would lie for food producers. Um, some figures um, which were kind of um, pretty primary uh, were put in front of the select committee and I think they probably struggled to get a, a, a handle on uh, exactly what the costs would be for producers. Uh, and as they were getting that information uh, as members of the select committee, um, I was getting that information too as a minister uh, responsible for the officials who were giving the select committee advice, and I found it um, uh, difficult to get a, a good handle on that. So uh, I think that's probably another reason as to why um, the minister who has these responsibilities should be very careful about uh, how they go about um, exercising their duties here and being very careful about what that may mean uh, to the uh, entities who are producing uh, the food. Um, can I just also come back um, and acknowledge uh, the Green Party? Um, as the, um, the Chairman uh, uh, mentioned at the very outset, I think, of his speech, uh, and this is an issue um, that the Green Party uh, has um, pushed uh, for some time. This bill was originally introduced uh, in the previous parliament under Stephen Browning, and I would like to um, commend Gareth Hughes for taking uh, the bill and his tenacity uh, for making sure that it got through the select committee process. Um, 
I, I did uh, wonder if it was ever going to come out of the Select Committee uh, with the toing and froing uh, that was going on uh, within the Select Committee, especially towards the end, um, and uh, when uh, there was the on again, off again saga around bacon. Um, and uh, the Honourable Nathan Guy is right, you know, who doesn't like a, a bacon sandwich in the morning? Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> There's plenty of pork on that side of the house for the last nine years. Uh, so, what I, so, so, so what I would say um, about that, Madam Speaker, moving on to the substance uh, of the bill, um, that um, I thank, uh, I thank uh, the, the Chair uh, for his concern uh, for me as the Minister, uh, concerned uh, by putting uh, the pork again cured products uh, within, the, <laughs> within the remit of the bill as it stands, saving me uh, the effort of uh, putting it uh, within a supplementary order paper. Um, I, I do know that there is um, continued um, debate about what is in and what is not uh, in this piece of legislation, um, but I understand that that may be um, dealt with um, at the committee stage, potentially uh, with um, a supplementary order paper, but we, we, we shall see. Um, Madam Speaker, I do note that across the Tasman, Australia has put in a multi-ingredient mandatory country of origin uh, labelling regime. Uh, and while this bill, um, as the Chair said, is only dealing with single ingredient foods, uh, we will be monitoring uh, the implementation of Australia's regime to see uh, what we can learn from it, that experience. And, and we've said publicly that um, uh, our aspiration is to get to that stage. And as I mentioned earlier, this is, I think is uh, the first step in towards uh, New Zealand going uh, to that um, multi-ingredient uh, regime in the future. As the Minister responsible uh, for including foods uh, under the Fair Trading Act, um, I'll be consulting further during the process of making regulations. Uh, and this bill provides 18 months uh, in order to make those regulations during this time. Uh, I'll be considering whether there is any need to include additional foods, uh, if it is important to consumers to know, for consumers to know where certain types of, of food will come from. I'll also be consulting with the food industry to make sure that the requirements of any regulations that may be coming into force are workable. Uh, I guess that goes to the caution that uh, Mr Bennett did, did speak about. I guess um, in a pure sense um, uh, there is the ability just to make the recommendations <laughs> without uh, any consultation at all. Um, but I think it does. Um, there is a responsibility, whether it be someone on this side of the House uh, or the other side of the House, to make sure there is full consultation, um, not just with those um, people who would like to see certain um, foods uh, or, ingredi or ingredients be uh, included within the regi regime, but also, I guess, with so much uncertainty uh, around the, the costs. And I think hopefully over time we'll get uh, more idea of exactly where those costs might lie, um, the consultation uh, to get to, this, uh, to the point uh, where the regulations might be needed Will be, um, will be very important. As I said, also, this um, bill will allow the Minister of Commerce and Consumer Affairs to exempt certain foods from the scope of the foods covered um, if it were to be unduly onerous or, would, or if it would not help consumers to make informed decisions. Um, Madam Speaker, I don't think I need to take much more time uh, of the House, but can I again just congratulate uh, Gareth Hughes for his shepherding of this piece of legislation through the House. I'm hoping um, that the committee stage uh, of this bill doesn't take as long as the select committee uh, stage of the bill, because it did take some time. But again, uh, I would hope that any issues that might not have been uh, be able to be dealt with um, uh, at the select committee, Bacon not being one of them, uh, might be able to be uh, dealt with uh, at the committee stage of the House. So, uh, Madam Speaker, we commend this bill to the House. I call the Honourable Nathan Guy. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, can I acknowledge you and the Chair uh, this evening?